All right, take a look at our next guest and talk a little bit more about the property sector. APAC real estate investment volume looks set to fall between 5 and 10 percent next year. Let's bring in Roddy Allen, Chief Asia Pacific Research Officer at JLL. Um, yeah, just can you tell us a little bit more about why, how you got that number? Mm. Um, why are we still thinking that, you know, transactions might contract here for next year? Sure, I mean, Yvonne, what we saw, what we expect to see for the full year for this year, it would be transaction volumes down about 25 percent for the full year. We saw we had a strong start to the year. The year slowed down. Um, <clears throat> we expect it to be slower at the start of next year, but then begin to pick up. So um, <clears throat> there's still positivity out there, but we've got a gap between buyers and sellers' expectations. Okay, understand. Is there any specific part of the real estate market that, uh, at least right now, stands out to you as perhaps it outperforms next year or does it better than the rest? So we're talking, I don't know, logistics, uh, office, what have you. Uh, uh, take your pick, Roddy. This is your expertise. Sure. <laughs> I think I think the, I think the key one that will stand out will be, will be the hotel sector. And um, we saw volumes in the hotel se sector uh, up by about 10 to 15 percent this year. We expect them to be up by, by around about five to six percent next year. And um, really off the back of, of what we're seeing globally with hotels, um, as people and countries sort of open back up, we essentially we, we've seen business travel come back. We've seen leisure travel come back. When that's happened, you know, uh, if, we, if you look at some markets in the states and, and elsewhere globally, we, we've seen. Um, rev power and also occupancy exceed the, the levels that they were at pre-COVID. So we're, we're very positive in the hotel sector. Roddy, what does it all mean for REITs? Rich, I mean, I, 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 th I think it's, uh, it's positive in the longer term. I mean, I think the, the broader real estate sector, yeah, there's challenges out there at the moment. Um, it, 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 a sort of more longer term, I think across all of the sectors, we look at them pretty positively. I think in the, in the short term, and um, when it comes to the, the sectors that have positive sort of tailwinds behind them, whether that be <clears throat> data centers, logistics, and um, multifamily as well, um, those will be the, the, the sectors to watch um, if reach so that have exposures. OK, what about the VEX topic about property in China here? Uh, yeah, we've got a reopening story. That, of course, is going to be a bumpy road. How are you looking at uh, things there? And, you know, you can also split it between residential, commercial and retail. Sure. I, I think in the short term, yeah, there will continue to be challenges for China. I think it, it, with China opening up, hopefully, um, domestically, that will go, bode well for the retail sector. However, there's likely to be some bumps in the road um, if we have outbreaks of COVID, if there are any other sort of lockdowns. But that will bode well for, re, for retail. Um, similarly, for the, for the office sector, longer term. Um, I think if we look more broadly at, at China, that opening up story is a really positive story. I think... When it comes to the international investors, as, as I heard you mention in the show earlier, we've definitely seen some distress in the, the, the um, investment market when it comes to, to China for, um, for the property sector. That said, that creates some opportunity for international investors that maybe have struggled um, with pricing in China to get into the market. So I think um, so short to medium term opportunity for international investors, I think longer term, anything we see happening in the China property sector will be pretty orderly um, in conjunction with, with government policy. Um, also, I mean, one of the big growth segments that we saw uh, was really when it came to logistics, right? Mm. Um, part of it was due to COVID too, but in terms of growth in, in logistics and industrials, do you think that still has quite a bit of room for growth next year, or do you think that sort of trend is over? Well, when it comes to Asia Pacific, that, 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 that trend has got a long way to go. I think the, the, the sort of key drivers of that sector um, in terms of online retail, etc. And um, when, when you look at the, the APAC logistics um, market, by 2025, it'll account for, in terms of revenue, it'll account for about 50% of the, the, the global um, revenue out there. So there's, there's a long way to go, and we expect to see the sector in terms of the, the new stock coming to the market, the opportunity there and the investable universe is going to go considerably even with, within the next 12 months. So a long way for that to play out. Uh, I want to ask you, Roddy, about Hong Kong office space at mm. high end. I mean, keen viewers of our programs will notice the beautiful backdrop of construction <laughs> <laughs> right behind us. I, I want to get your sense, really, of do we get the demand to come in and, and fill out the office yeah, space here in the supply. city? Yeah. Particularly, as I guess in some cases, people have, well, some companies have moved to Singapore or, 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 or other places. 
Yeah, I, I think as we all know, with it, for Hong Kong, we've we've seen corrections in the in the market over the last three years, and mm. um, with the with the troubles in Hong Kong, and then with everything we've seen with, with COVID. And um, that that said, supply is relatively tight, and we're we're now seeing the market mm. turning. And um, so I think when, when it comes to Hong Kong, that longer term story is positive, and I think the the opening back up of Hong Kong. Um, we'll, we'll see people returning to the to the market that maybe we, we've been working overseas as well. And, and let's not forget, I mean, that the Hong Kong market has been, in terms of you know rentals, has been the, the highest destination for rentals globally. So in, in many ways, the correction that we've seen in rents actually may be may be useful for Hong Kong um, longer term in terms of affordability. Ultimately, Roddy, we've got away from free money we've got interest rates going up how does that change the picture too oh it, it, one thing that has definitely changed the picture on rich is, is the fact that if you look at the the opportunities and where we're likely to see strong investment this year and um, if you look at the opportunities japan really stands out for two reasons uh, you know the fact that we still have cheap money in japan um, and that makes that sort of yield versus the cost of cap the cost of capital that spread very appealing for investors and let's not forget, we've seen a considerable correction in the currency as well. So for major international investors, where Japan is very much seen as a safe haven market in times of, of, of stress, um, which we're seeing now in challenges, um, Japan will stand out for sure. Uh, final question. This is a very long report you guys have put out. Anything that we haven't talked about yet, do you think we should know? <laughs> I think it's pretty, 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 pretty comprehensive. Um, the, everything that we've we've covered. I mean, I think there are other standard markets that I, w I would pick for next year. Firstly, Singapore as as a safe haven market as well, and the strong fundamentals that we're seeing there. And similarly, uh, Australia. And um, we, yeah, the cost of capital has gone up there. And um, but just the the, the low beta characteristics of, of Australia making that stand out as well. Roddy, thank you so much. Happy New Year, sir. Roddy Allen there, you, Chief you. Research Officer, uh, Asia Pacific at JLL. Let's stay on property very quickly here. The developers are moving or some developers are moving.